take two, <laughs> which most of you watching could feel me because a lot of you guys did tribute videos with multiple takes. So first off, thank everyone who did a tribute video uh, of my friends and family that sent that over. I feel your pain. But also, we're here for our updates. Hitchhiker's Guide to Cancer updates. Day 337, post-Christmas, almost New Year's, wishing happy holidays from me and my lady. Hi. Merry Christmas. <laughs> All right. So, should be pretty quick. Medical updates. Um and some general life updates, but first, let's address the obvious. New lit gear. Look at these. Oh, yeah. Hoodies. Look at this beanie. Fresh. Yes. <laughs> Shout out to our boy Chris who hooked it up. We got some love as a treatment, which we'll get into that in a little bit. Where we have some exciting lit news. I also wanted to go over some medical updates, some general updates. Um, so we'll jump right in. All right. So we should start with. The question that I think is on most of your minds, because I've been getting that question a lot, which is radiation. So we'll start with the medical updates. Radiation just ended. I did 10 treatments of radiation. Today was officially the last day. Woo! I feel good. I feel good. Slight headaches, which has been consistent through the whole thing. And um, also I have... Yeah, it'll do. yeah so pretty consistently slight headaches and um i guess restless tired um but nothing overly crazy moving forward um i would say as far as radiation is concerned the the treatments when you do them and i don't know anybody else that's really done them so i would know but like the tre treatments when you do them um they didn't really beat me up i think it's more what happens after so um, I'll speak to it if you want to correct anything that I get that I misspeak on. So we mentioned this before when we said I was going into the radiation. It's sort of the latency. So what happens after some time after the after the radiation radiation? So I have a follow-up MRI of next steps. After you get the radiation, how long until there's potential like swelling? Did he say? Typically you would start noticing symptoms towards the end of treatment, which we're at the end of treatment, and then thereafter. And sometimes you can experience symptoms even a month after yeah. your last treatment. So really now moving forward is kind of like the sweet spot in terms of like, if there's going to be, if there's going to be more side effects now and moving forward over the next month, we, we would want to monitor those symptoms. Yeah, so while we while we wait for the MRI, so the MRI will be in a month, likely at Hopkins. And then she'll monitor me as she's really good at monitoring me um, for any- oh, Close watch. <laughs> any side effects, which is primarily just swelling, swelling and seeing how that impacts me. So far, we're okay. We'll keep you guys posted on how the MRI goes. Probably do another video before that. And then the next question becomes next treatment, which is the chemo. And when do we start that? So we got to, we have to reach out to the doctors at Duke and Hopkins and get the perspective on not if I'm going to start chemo again, but when I'm going to start chemo again, there may be a little bit of a break, but we'll get to, if you guys remember before I started radiation, I was on actually my fourth and fifth chemo. So I was concurrently on two chemos. And so what is that going to look like moving forward? Is there going to be a break? Is there going to be a rest period? Am I going to start right back to chemo? And will it be one or will it be two at the same time? Which quite frankly, probably doesn't surprise anybody, makes me just continuing to just put my body through the ringer, through chemos, through radiations, through all this stuff does scare me a little bit. And how much can we push my body? But knock on wood, it is, my body has res responded well, resiliently. Um, and so I would say from my perspective, it feels like things are progressing, progressing nicely. Um, and there hasn't been anything major. What would you say? Yeah, I agree with that. And I think, I guess the silver lining with chemo is if for some reason 
you're taking it and it does start to really knock you out. I mean, there's always the option to stop taking chemo and you're not going to have yeah. any damage because of that. So, um, you know, I think it's something that you can just wait and see and see how you tolerate it. Yeah, absolutely. So before I get to the general up updates, we do have some surprises to come in line with this. Um, well, they're not going to come today, but we have surprises to come in the future. But um, in line with the new gear, another piece of great news is the Lit Foundation, which is a nonprofit that um, two close friend of ours are helping us or champion, which is the Lit Foundation, which is uh, Chris and Sabrina, you guys met Sabrina in the last video, I think, or previous video, mm -hmm. a couple videos, um, back. two videos ago, and so they're helping through their company. But they've uh, we've been in the process of forming the Lit Foundation nonprofit, and as of last week, the Lit Foundation has been officially recognized recognized as a nonprofit in Maryland, which is huge. Shout out to Chris, shout out to Sabrina, and everybody else that made that happen. We're excited to let you know what's coming on, going on with the Lit Foundation as we move forward. Um, so anyways, this was our way of celebrating that milestone. Other general updates. Um, any other general updates? I'm putting you on the spot. I'm sorry. Um, no, I just have a closing statement, but. Yeah, we're, so um, feeling good. Some people ask me about travel. We don't really have anything big coming up. I think we're more laying low right now, mm -hmm. keeping it local, keeping it regional, uh, more visitors. But other than that, I think it's just about us recovering, recouping, re-energizing, and um, just staying healthy and making sure we're good going into the new year. Um, with that being said, I just wanted to generally talk about um, how I'm feeling. I told you physically how I'm feeling. I think we're in a really good place. Um, I want to create a little bit more consistency, consistency around the videos we're doing and give you guys more, um, more consistent information as far as that's concerned. So stay tuned for that. Appreciate the love. As I always say, we appreciate the love and, um, the people reaching out. I think other than that, nothing major to report. I'm not killing it in my... I mean, where's that coming from? <laughs> so yes, I think we're in a good place. She hasn't loved me more than she could ever love me. <laughs> Our love is in a great place. Yeah. Uh, it's soaring. Um. And with that being said, I think Lindsay has a general update that she wants to let you yes. all know. Well, Closing nurse statement. Lindsay. Um, so obviously we've been getting a lot of visitors, which Christian very much appreciates. It's so nice to see all the wonderful people in his life here to support him. That said, it is cold and flu and COVID season. And we just want to make sure that before you come visit, you use your best judgment. If you're not feeling well, if you have anyone that you live with that hasn't been feeling well or has been getting sick or has been getting over a cold or whatever, just pick another time to visit. We want to stay as healthy as possible. Err on the side of caution. Yes. Err. Yeah. Just stay <laughs> home. <laughs> but, you know, we just. Obviously, want to keep Christian healthy. He is immunocompromised, uh, especially as he gears up to start getting back on chemo again. And his nurse needs to stay healthy, too, to take care of him and myself. So um, just, yeah, err on the side of caution, please. And that's it. <laughs> All right. So I'll close it out with this. I've been thinking a lot about um, moving forward and in, in where we want to go from a content perspective, motivating versus inspiring, and really thinking about parents um, and maybe a little bit, something a little bit more action oriented. So I'm going to throw this out there. It's something new. Love the comments. Feel free to comment, whatever you want. What's that? I didn't know about this. Part. This is new. <laughs> I'm, putting, I'm putting it out there. Um, every morning I journal and I try to, well, I don't do that. I lied. I don't do it every morning. I try to, but um, my gratitude journal is one that 
um, is important to me. And I, and some of you have already received some gratitude videos, but um, I'm going to task you guys with something. I'm going to put you to work. I want you tomorrow to reach out to someone and I don't care if it's text. I don't care if it's a phone call, however you want to do it. Video, reach out to somebody that you're grateful for and tell them that you're grateful for them and reflect on why you're grateful for them. See what it does for you. And if you share that experience with us, I think that would be awesome to hear. But however it looks to you, share that gratitude. Um, it doesn't have to be for me. Don't do it for me. But you can do it for you me. You can't do it for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's it for 337. We love you guys. We'll see you in the next video. Bye. Bye. <laughs>